Is the IRS on its way out? Is it going to go the way of the white buffalo, as my husband says? I don't know. Chris Whalen, CPA, is here to discuss. This is a fun article from the New Republic. Trump's plan to turn the IRS into a grifter's paradise. Billy Long, an anti-tax huckster who doesn't think the IRS should exist, makes his living promising to cut your tax bill 40%. All right, Chris, the first thing I want to start with is Billy Long. Can you give us just a, 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 you're a CPA tax guy. It sounds like he spent some of his recent years working with people through the tax system. And you never know when you're reading the news, if they're typifying something, you know, if they're describing somebody correctly. So would you call him an anti-tax person? I mean, I don't know if Huckster is what we got, but would you call him anti-tax I think he's anti-IRS. I mean, from a constitutional perspective, he's mentioned that before in the past that he doesn't think it's constitutional that the government can uh, can um, can force us to pay income tax. So that's you know, of course it's legal they can do that. Um, but I think what he's complained about also that makes sense to me is how they really have a lot of fear that goes along with with their name, and so he wants to soften the IRS also make it much more customer service oriented which that I agree with. It is, there's a lot of mess there. There's a lot of bureaucracy. It's the worst part of my job trying to get something done. The people there are great. The agents are great, but the systems are very antiquated. So he's been railing against the lack of customer service that we don't get what we pay for with the IRS. And in many ways, I agree with that. Okay. Let me show you one, one paragraph. It's actually right at the beginning of this article. And I think this is probably how the mainstream news thinks about Trump. So it's, it, it, it probably is a general statement for all of them. Donald Trump is flooding the zone with so many terrible nominations that you may have missed that the president-elect recently picked former Representative Billy Long of Missouri to be the next commissioner of the IRS. Here's another instance of choosing a fox to guard the chicken coop. Now, their first point is why they say he shouldn't be nominating anybody because the current one, Danny Werfel, was appointed in 2022 to a five-year term. And the same with the FBI director. Uh, they should just be in their job till 2027. So before we even get into, all right, if he really does, he's really uh, anti-IRS. In fact, I, I did see that at one point he introduced a bill to abolish the IRS back when he was in Congress. Should he even be appointed anyway? I mean, should 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 these folks get to serve out their five-year appointment. What do you think about changing the guards? Of course, we have to. I mean, I would do that. Who would who would want to keep the old administration? I know some of them were appointed by Trump, but this is different than the 2016 term uh, the, after the election of 2016. So, of course, I'd be doing the same exact thing. If I wasn't happy with someone's direction, what they've done, I need someone on my team that isn't in the pocket of the deep state, right? A lot of these people they're complaining about they're, they're not able to blackmail into submission. That's why they don't like them, I think, part of it. So I think that he'd be great to come in. But again, these broad sweep, sweeping strokes of abolish the IRS, it would take a long time and a lot of analysis, which we'll get to later in the interview about why we have to really take our time. I think we should simplify things. A lot of people that use a tax repair, such as myself, shouldn't really have to, like basic W-2 people that go to H&R Block, that should be simplified online, but you just can't abolish the IRS. There's too many things that happen that people need, small business and families need to happen to help them. If we abolished it, it would bankrupt millions of people in the, in the country right now. All right. Before we ask Chris, if say we do abolish the IRS or this does, this drumbeat does come to fruition under Billy, uh, Billy's leadership, you uh, can go to greenpasture.org, use promo code Allison at checkout and get yourself some fermented cod liver butter oil. Now they've got lots of products here, but the one that we've been taking in my family is this, the fermented cod liver oil and concentrated butter oil blend. I used to get cavities all the time when I went to the dentist. I started taking this stuff. I started going back and they were marveling at the shape of my teeth and gums. They didn't usually ever want to know what I had done differently. They did not care, but that's okay because now I'm here to tell you. I started taking this. It really was partially a vitamin D deficiency, I think. And this has just helped. It's a great product. It's not a supplement. It is a food. It is fermented cod liver oil. And it is butter oil, high vitamin D butter oil blended together. 
it's exactly the way that Dr. Weston Price, turn of the century biological dentist, said that we should give our teeth and frankly, just our bodies the boost they need in a processed food, post-industrial lifestyle type world. So go get yourself some of the product and use Allison at checkout for 10% off. Like I said, they've also got some other great stuff like all natural muscle rubs, or um, you like to put like a Vicks vapor rub on your chest when you got a cold, but you don't like Vicks vapor rub because it's full of chemicals. They've got something like that. That's just all natural. They're skate oil and cod oil and then natural uh, essential oils, all kinds of good stuff. So go check it out. Greenpasture.org promo code Allison. All right. So the big question that I guess on everyone's mind is, you know, including <laughs> the republics, uh, talking about it being a grifter's paradise. What, what is going to happen at the IRS? I mean, you hear you have a guy that doesn't, you know, or at least on the surface, if we're going to take him seriously, doesn't seem to be someone who's very pro uh, IRS. I don't know if that necessarily means that he believes in all cases we shouldn't be paying any money to the government, but maybe you could expound on that if you, if you know more than I do. But do you think that he, do you think this could really happen? And if so, does that like release everybody from paying a tax or does it just mean you, you kind of, look at the IRS and, and create some other kind of new agency where people or new, new system, I guess, where people are still going to be paying money to the government. Like in other words, it's not going to be what you think you, you don't throw out your up your cheers right now. <laughs> you may still owe a lot of money. Well, I, I, I think, I think if he becomes a director, I mean, he doesn't really have a lot of power. You know, he just has to administer for the law, what the IRS is supposed to do. Now, someone like him comes in, of course, there could be a culture change. That might be a good thing, but he can't unilaterally do anything. He just has to live within the law of what, what the IRS code says and the mandate he's gotten from Congress. So you know, he, he can't unilaterally abolish the IRS. He just has to come in and direct it. He's just a figurehead at this time once he gets installed. So nothing can happen without Congress you know, making significant changes. Now I'm hoping that there are some simplifications. There are a lot of complicated things that are unnecessary that have been in the law a long time. So I know he's mentioned that too, to make things less cumbersome. I love that. So that I, I think we're not gonna abolish the IRS, but I think we have to make some changes to make things simpler and eliminate some waste. But um, yeah, I, I, so I wouldn't worry if he was installed today, there's gonna be no change at all. He has no power to make a change. In this article from CNBC, Trump's pick for IRS commissioner receives mixed response from Washington tax community. They have a quote um, from Trump on True Social saying that taxpayers and the wonderful employees of the IRS will love having Billy at the helm. That says to me, the IRS is going nowhere. <laughs> the IRS, because they're because well, he'll be like, you're gonna have to find a new job because Billy's gonna come wipe all your jobs out. You know, instead it's like, hey, you're gonna love having him. He's gonna be the director. I don't see the IRS going anywhere. Well, I think from a small business perspective, it, there is an there is an attitude. I think part of it is which was warranted that that the smaller businesses get audited more often because they're less complex and it's easy money or easier work. Whereas the more complex returns take a lot more uh, a lot more experience in terms of an, an agent. So I'm hoping that that's part of his part of his what he said over the over over the years too. So that I hope happens also a little more equity in who gets audited. So, so a lot of things he said are actually good for small families, small businesses and families. Um, he wants to he wants to get rid of the death tax or estate tax, which I agree with. You know why tax in a state it's already been taxed. So, so I, any 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 area where there's double taxation, such as with the estate tax, I think we should definitely abolish that. And, but that not abolish the IRS, but abolish that certain taxes that are unfair. Okay, one other interesting thing I didn't know a whole lot about is this is a quote from um, Senate Finance Committee Chair Ron Wyden of Oregon. What's most concerning is that Mr. Long left office and jumped into the scam plagued industry involving the employee retention tax credit, uh, saying the employee retention tax credit was a pandemic era tax break designed to support small businesses impacted by shutdowns. However, the IRS has denied billions in improper filings after companies pressured businesses to amend payroll returns to claim the tax break. What, why does that show poorly on him? Why are they bringing that up to say this that's bad on his part that he got into that? So, so what happened with the employee retention credit was a great idea. It helped a lot of companies that had some slow sales 
It gave them some extra money and some refunds of some certain taxes that allowed them to continue working. So overall, it was a great idea. What happened was there were some companies that got involved because, because of course, filing for this credit was cumbersome. So companies got involved that were charging a percentage of the credit, not just an hourly rate. I believe you might have been involved with that. And there were a lot of people taking 15 to 20 percent of your credit um, as a fee. Um, and so, of course, that that was almost, uh, you know, it was it was, of course, it wasn't professional. It was usury. So I think he might have been involved with the company that did that for people. And of course, the IRS clamped down on that and has and has has gone to audit them and look at. And even has has um has called in the question if these people should get the credits. A lot of companies out there that were doing these returns for these credits, they weren't really looking at the rules. There are rules about income losses, rules about retaining employees. A lot of these companies didn't care. They just put in for the credit based on some sales numbers and payroll. And so that, that that's where the scamming came in. I believe he might have been involved with something like that. And he was called he was called on the carpet for that. Hmm. Okay. If you want to hire Chris as your CPA, he is a great CPA, Chris Whalen, CPA.com. You can call him 732-673-0510 or go to Chris Whalen, CPA.com. Also, if you would like to be on my editorial board and you agree or disagree with something Chris is saying or something I'm saying, then you can ask questions yourself. It's a great way to support the show. It's five bucks a month, allisonmorrow.locals.com. And you can send me mail P.O. Box 3355 to Nell in Florida, 34432. Love hearing from everybody. Thanks for people who support the show or just send words of encouragement, seeds for the garden. Really, really love it. P.O. Box 3355 to Nell in Florida, 34432. Question over on locals. Grumpy old man. It might not be easy, but we should do it, talking about abolishing the IRS. So the question would be, how can it be done? I would I would love to abolish the IRS and just make it like people want a national sales tax, a value added tax. But of course, we're going to go over in my 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 presentation in a moment some of the some of the some of the nuances and 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 that we have to talk about because there's a lot of lower income people that are taking a lot of money in terms of credits that if they lost them suddenly again we'd have uh, we'd have a lot of homeless families on the streets which we don't want so. I'll explain some of that when we talk about my presentation in a minute. Where is your presentation, Chris? I don't have it. It's right, it's right here. You want me to share my screen? Yeah, go ahead. Share your screen. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And while you're doing that, um, join the wine club. You can join the wine club, allisonwinepromo.com. Amazing, amazing, amazing wines. Wines that I have that are clean, clean in the sense that, you know, the commercial wine industry is the same as the commercial food industry, plagued with artificial dyes, flavors, and all that kind of stuff. This stuff is really a fantastic product that you'll like to drink because it tastes very good, but you will feel very good about where it's produced, how it's produced, small family operations, highly limited wines, hand-picked grapes, natural fermentation. Some of these grapes are grown between six and 9,000 feet in altitude. And it's a great way to support the show. They've been with me since the beginning and it's also amazing wine. You can get it as a gift, sign up for the club. You'll get six bottles of wine every three months, and then you'll have wine to give as a gift for the next three months. Then you'll get six more bottles. You can give away the wine for more gifts. Holidays, birthdays, what have you, allisonwinepromo.com. Okay, so Chris, we have his presentation here. Let's start. Right, so remember, everyone, you hear Steve Forbes talk about a flat tax plan. That's not a national sales tax plan. That would still keep the IRS in force, but give everyone the same rate and maybe do some simplifications. But again, not just the Band-Aid. So when we talk about the IRS, so we have to talk about a few things. So the problem lies, if we abolish IRS, there's... There's a lot of money that there's the taxpayers are given. Millions and millions of people and families are given free money through the system in terms of earned income credits and child tax credits. If we abolish the IRS and don't replace these, millions will be made homeless while the rich get a tax break because the earned income credits and child tax credits are just welfare in disguise. But that's what's happening here. So let me go, let me just show some exa an example. So here we have an example of a low earner, a single parent with two children making minimum wage. 30,000 a year. They have a tax of 920, but part of the child tax credit eliminates that. So they really have no tax at all. Now, they still get earned income credits of 4,800, additional child tax credit of 3,100. So they're getting $7,900 of, of money from other taxpayers or 21% from other citizens. 
So their net family income really is $37,900. Does that make sense so far? Mm -hmm. All right. So monthly net family income is 3,200. So remember the taxpayer had zero tax withheld. They paid nothing in with payroll and still got $7,900 in cash for people who pay their taxes. Now let's see, let's, let's see what happens if we abolish the IRS. So we only have $30,000 of income, right? Still, there's nothing additional. Let's say they paid on $25,000 of their purchases on, on, on a daily basis, 25,000. And so we have 20% tax, 5,000. So their net family income becomes 25,000. Look, that's down from 37,9. Their monthly income is 2,100 now. So, so look what happens. Their net family income was 3,200. Now it's only 2,100. They lose 1,100 a month or 34% of their income is gone if we abolish the IRS today. So it's additional welfare. So here, so nationwide as of December 23, we had 57 billion in earned income tax credit. We had 40, 40 million families that got a child tax credit. So if you look here, this area here, so we have $72 billion of EITC plus CTC. And we have the welfare system has 1 trillion or a thousand billion. So we looked at 72 billion as an additional welfare on top of it of 7.2%, which people don't think about. So our welfare system is actually understated by 7.2%. Because, of course, it's welfare. It's money they get. They don't have to ever pay it back, and they get to spend it on whatever they like. So now, so now let's go to a higher earner on this. Let's, let's analyze them. So we have a $900,000 person. Their tax is two ninety one. dollars they, they, they make too much money to get any kind of credit, so their net tax is two ninety one dollars or 32%. So look, their net family income is six oh nine. dollars Their net monthly family income is $50,750. All right, that's pretty straightforward. Now let's see them under the new abolish the IRS plan. So they make 900,000. I'm assuming in my example that they're, they're paying out 400,000 on items that'll be sales tax nationally. That's $80,000. So see, look here, that's only 9%. It was 32% above, if you remember. So the rich are saving 23%, right? So the net family income is now 80, 820,000. The monthly income is now 68,300. So if we take a look at the, the um, they're saving $17,500 a month or 26%. So if you look here, but compare it to the low earner, they lost $1,100 a month and it's about 34%. So it's pretty, so it's interesting that if, if we did such a thing, even if it went to 30%, the rich are gonna get a significant tax break and the poor people who get these credits are going to be bankrupted. 